In this video, I'm going to give you 10 promotional tips for your low content book business that will help you create a monthly passive income for yourself. Hey guys, Craig here. Hope everybody's doing well. Now, for those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Craig Babin, and I'm on a mission to turn my part-time drawing hobby into a full-time income. And I'm hoping to inspire as many of you as possible to do the exact same thing. So if you have a part-time drawing hobby that you want to monetize, then hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be posting some really useful stuff on this channel that you are not going to want to miss. That being said, let's get started. Okay, so far on my channel, I've uploaded videos that show you how to lay out and create low content book interiors. I've also uploaded a few videos that show you how to lay out and design low content book covers. I've even uploaded a video that walks you step by step through the entire process of uploading your books to Amazon using KDP. Now that I've shown you how to create and upload your low content books, now it's time to learn how to turn those low content books into a passive income generating business. So in this video, I'm going to give you 10 promotional tips to help you set up your low content book business online so that you can start generating passive income right away. So if you're ready, let's get to it. If you're serious about getting into low content book publishing, then you need to think about it as a business. If all you're planning on doing is creating a few random low content books and then uploading them to Amazon, then the chances of you making any real passive income is pretty low. If you're looking to make an extra $1,000 per month or more, then you need to think of this little endeavor as a business right from the start. And you don't want your books to be scattered all over the Amazon marketplace either. If you want to get up sales, which is when customers buy more than one of your products, or you want to get return customers, then you need to have your entire inventory all in one place. So what you basically need is an online store. And if you're going to have a store, then you need a name for that store. So my first tip for promoting your low content books is to come up with a catchy name for your online bookstore. Your name should include an indication of what it is you're selling, journals, notebooks, activity books, but at the same time be unique enough that no one else would be using it. Now it's important that the store name you choose is the same name as the author name you're using when you upload your books to KDP. You don't have to use your own legal name as the author when you upload your books. You can use any made up name you want. Just make sure that whatever name you use for your store is the same name you're using for your author name. That'll be important later on. Now you don't have to register this store name as a legal business. Amazon is selling your books to the public, not you. So Amazon is the one that's collecting sales tax. You're simply receiving a royalty on the books that they're selling on your behalf and it's up to you to pay income tax on the royalties that you receive under your own personal taxes. Now if you want to separate your KDP income from your own personal income, then you can register a business, but that's entirely up to you and that's a discussion for an entirely different video. All you need right now is a catchy name that people will remember when they're looking for your low content bookstore online. Now you want to make sure that you're not using an already established business name. The only 100% guaranteed way to verify this would be to do a search of the business registry. But a good way to ensure that it's probably not being used is to do the following things. First, go to the Trademark Electronic Search System, or TESS for short, and search the name. I'll put a link to this site in the description below. All you have to do is a basic wordmark search. Type in the name that you want to use. I'm just going to use Nikki's Notebooks for this example. And then hit Submit. If nothing comes up, then you know that this name was not registered as a trademark, which is a good sign. Next, just Google the name. If nothing comes up in the first few pages, again, that's a good sign. And the final thing you should do is see if the .com extension for your name is available to purchase. Any business that's going to operate online is going to try and secure the .com extension of their name. .com is the most used extension of all extensions, and it's the one that's seen as being worldwide. So if the name you want to use is available in the .com, as well as other extensions, then it's probably safe to say that no one is operating a store with that name online. So just to recap, tip number one is to come up with a catchy name for your bookstore. Do a search on test to see if it's registered as a trademark. Search it on Google, and then finally see if the .com extension of the domain name is available to purchase. This next tip will be the only thing that you need to spend money on in this video. 
Now you don't have to do this tip, but I strongly recommend that you do. That being said, tip number two is to purchase the .com extension of your bookstore name. <laughs> I bet you saw that one coming. Now a great way to reduce the chances of someone registering this business down the road behind your back is to buy the .com extension of the domain outright. Any business that is going to operate online will want to own the .com extension of their business name, and they certainly don't want it in the hands of another business. Now, does this mean that another company won't be able to register this name as a business if you own the .com? No, not at all. It just means that the fact that the .com extension is already taken is going to serve as sort of a deterrent for them. See, if they decide to go through with registering that name for their business, they're not going to want the prime URL extension of their business name pointing to a website other than their own. So they're going to want to own it. And since you already own it, the only way that they can get it is to buy it off you. Now, just because you paid $11.99 for it doesn't mean that you have to sell it for that price. What it really comes down to is how badly do they want it. And if they really want it, then you offer it up for around $50,000. Hey, if you're going to have to spend the day changing your name on all of your social media accounts, you may as well make it worth your while. Now the odds are that this won't happen. In most cases, when it comes to small online businesses, if the .com extension is already taken, most people will just use another name. Now if it's a big corporation that wants it, then you can make some pretty good money off of it. Owning the .com extension of your bookstore name is also going to serve another purpose down the road, but we'll get to that later. So once again, tip number two is to purchase the .com domain extension for the name that you want to use for your online bookstore. Okay, on to tip number three. Now that you have a store name, open up an Instagram business account, a Facebook brand page, a Pinterest account, and a Twitter account, all under your store username. If you want to open accounts on additional social media platforms, that's up to you, just as long as you have these four. So sticking with my previous example, if your store name is Nikki's Notebooks, choose the account name at Nikki's Notebooks. It's also a good idea to create a new Gmail account under your store name as well. This way you can use that new email address to open all of your social media accounts. Now I'm assuming since you're watching this video on YouTube that you already know how to open a social media account, so I'm not going to walk you through how to open up each one of these accounts. Besides, they're pretty self-explanatory. Just know that those are the four major social media accounts that you're going to want to have to promote your low content bookstore. Okay, on to tip number four. Now that you have social media accounts, create a custom header and avatar to represent your low content bookstore. I strongly suggest that you keep it simple in this area. When it comes to the avatar, you can either create a circular logo with your store's initials on it, or you can draw or purchase a piece of clip art that has an illustration of a cartoon book with glasses on it. You know, something cute like that. Now, depending on which way you decide to go with the avatar, just make sure that your header matches your avatar as far as branding is concerned. In other words, use the same color palette. And if your avatar is cartoony, then make your header cartoony as well. If your avatar is more stylish, then make your header to match. Just be consistent. Now you'll only need a header for Facebook and Twitter. The other social media platforms don't require one. As far as the image for your header, you can just download a royalty free image from freeimages.com. I'll put a link to that site in the description below. Just query something like notebooks and see what comes up. You know, something as simple as this would work. Just crop this image and then put your name on it in Photoshop. There are thousands of photos to choose from. So just look around until you find something that works for you. Now, just combine this header image with your avatar and you're done. Okay, on to tip five. As I said earlier in the video, you wanna keep all of your books in one convenient location and preferably on the same platform that you're selling on. Now, there really isn't a good simple option for setting up a storefront for your KDP books on the Amazon Marketplace. But they do have an option that will do and that's the author page. So here's a good example of an author page that's dedicated to low content books. As you can see, they've got their store name, a little avatar that pertains to their store name, and a complete catalog of all the low content books they've uploaded to Amazon. If you ever want to have repeat customers or customers who buy more than one of your books at a time, this author page is a must. Now this author's page that you're looking at right here is on the Amazon US platform. Most Amazon platforms around the world have their own author pages, so you're going to have to open one on each platform. 
If you want to see which marketplaces your book is being sold in, just go to your bookshelf in KDP. Go to any one of your books and hover over this little view on Amazon link. These are all of the countries that your book is being sold in. So you're going to want to have an author page in each of these countries if the option is available. Okay, so let me show you how to set up your author page. Go into your KDP account and then go up to the top menu and click on the marketing tab. On the marketing page, you'll see a section for Author Central. Now when you click on this little drop down, you'll get a list of many of the Amazon marketplaces that have the author page option. There are more Amazon marketplaces that have author pages than what you see here. It's just that some of the marketplaces that are close together geographically actually share the same author page content. So if you open up an author page in say the US, you'll also get one in Canada, assuming that you've opted to sell your books in Canada and internationally when you uploaded them. But these ones here are the ones you need to focus on. I strongly suggest that you start by creating a US author page first. When I opened my page, I found that after I had created my US page, when it came time to opening a page in the other countries, the Author Central in those countries just asked me if I wanted to use the same books and information from my US page. I just said yes, and my page was automatically created on each of those foreign platforms in the appropriate language. So to set up your US Amazon Author page, all you have to do is select Amazon.com from the dropdown, and then click the Manage Author Page button below it. Now my author page is already created, so I really can't show you what it's going to look like the first time you log in. But just know that you're going to have to give them some basic information. And the best place to start is with filling in your profile. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is upload your store avatar. Next, you're going to want to fill in your biography. Now my author page is not dedicated to low content books. It's actually going to be for children's storybooks that I write and illustrate. So for that reason, my biography is about myself, the author. But if your author page is dedicated to a low content bookstore, then just put a little blurb about the type of books that you sell. It's all you really need. Once you've created all of this, save it out. It'll take a while for Amazon to set it all up, but once it's ready, you'll be able to view your author page in all the different countries. Now your custom URL with your store name on it will only be for the US platform, but don't worry about it because we're not going to be using this URL to promote your author page anyway. Just know that you also have the option to attach blog feeds in case you have a blog that you want to link to your author page. You can also upload additional photos and videos to your pages as well. All of that media will show up on your author page right here. After you've set up your profile, it'll be time to add your books. To do this, just go up to the books tab and click on it. Now I already have my books uploaded here, but you won't. So if you want to add your books to your author page, simply click the add book button. Then inside of the search box, type in your author or store name. Now remember, the name that you're putting in the author space when you're uploading your low content books to KDP should be the same as your store name. You don't have to put your legal name on your books when it comes to the author. So make sure that these two names match or else your books won't show up on your author page. All of the books that you've uploaded to Amazon that have your author or store name on them will show up here. All you have to do to add one of them to your page is just click on it and then they'll be added to your book section. Now it takes between 24 to 48 hours for the book to actually appear on your author page after you've added it, so be patient. One other useful tool in this section is that you can see your sales rank at a glimpse. This is useful if you just want to see how your books are performing on each platform. Other than that, that's basically it. Now once your US page is up and running, you may have to log into all the other platforms just to get them up and running as well. You had to do it when I created my pages, but Amazon may have changed it since then. So try logging into each platform to make sure that all of your pages are operational. So in summary, tip 5 is to open your Amazon author pages all around the world. Now on tip 6. Okay, now when it comes to directing potential customers from your social media pages to your products, it's extremely important that you send them to the right Amazon marketplace. When you create a post on one of your social media accounts promoting one of your low content books, you have no way of knowing what country the person viewing that post actually lives in. So if you send somebody to your product page in another country, the shipping fees are going to be way higher than if they bought the book from their own country, which may prevent them from buying it. 
So if they want to purchase your book, they're going to have to go to the Amazon platform in their country and search for your book there. That extra step that they need to take to buy your book could be enough to make them change their mind and not buy it at all. So you want to make sure that your potential customers are viewing your books in the proper Amazon marketplace. To do that, you're going to want to create a Linktree landing page. I'll put a link to Linktree's website in the description below. All you need is a free account. Just use your store name for your username and use your store Gmail account for your email. Once you sign up and log in, you'll be taken to the administration page. The first page is the links page. To create a link, just click the add new link button. To edit the information on the link, just click the little pencil icons. The title of your link should read something like your store name, followed by Amazon and the country it's in. So keeping with my previous example, my title would be Nikki's Notebooks dash Amazon US. And for the link, just copy and paste the URL to your Amazon US author page. And then just repeat this step for each country that you have an author page in. Once you've got all of your links in, now you can customize the appearance of your page. Here, you can upload your book store avatar. I wouldn't worry about adding in a profile or a bio. Your username will automatically appear below your avatar and that's good enough. Underneath the profile information, you can choose a theme. Pick one that matches the color palette of your avatar. Now, if you want to really customize your page, you can always sign up for a pro account, but I don't think it's necessary. Your Linktree page is just a quick transition from one platform to another. It's not like people are going to be spending a lot of time on this page. Once you have it all set up, click on the link in the top right hand corner to see what your landing page looks like. Now you could use this URL to link all of your social media accounts to this landing page and there's nothing wrong with doing that. But remember, regardless of which social media platform you're on, most of your posts promoting your low content books will not be seen on your homepage. They'll be seen individually in the news feeds of the person who is looking at them. And for that reason, it's always a good idea to include your URL on the picture of your post. Now this Linktree URL is just way too complex. No one will ever remember this. So this is where the .com domain you purchased comes into play. Nikki'sNotebooks.com is way easier to remember than the Linktree URL. So that's the one you should use. Now before you can use that URL, you need to make sure that it's forwarding to your Linktree landing page. Forwarding just means pointing to. Now I can only show you how to do this in GoDaddy, but the process is going to be similar no matter where you purchased it from. So all you have to do is find your domain in the product section of whichever domain host you purchased it from. There should be a little menu icon that you can click on that allows you to edit your domain settings and manage the DNS. What you want to do here is manage the DNS. Once you click on that, you'll be brought to the DNS management page. Now I'm just going to blur out my DNS records because you don't need to see that. But if I scroll down, you'll come to a section called forwarding. All you have to do here is choose edit or add forwarding and then copy and paste your Linktree URL into the text box. Just make sure to delete the HTTP dot dot slash slash part and then hit save. It may take a few hours before the forwarding kicks in, but once it has, you'll be able to just type in your stores.com domain name and you'll be directed right to your Linktree landing page. Now that you have your custom.com domain forwarding properly, make sure to use it as your website on all of your social media accounts. Keep in mind that you can still link directly to an Amazon product page from Facebook, Twitter, or Pinterest. That's perfectly fine, but your website address on all of your social media sites should link to your Linktree page. Now if you're going to link directly to an Amazon product page, you may want to put in separate links to the major Amazon platforms that you tend to sell on. For most of my books, I usually link to the US, Canada, and sometimes the UK. Okay, let's go on to tip number seven. So when it comes time to creating promotional posts for your low content books, it's important that you don't just use the image from your cover. People need to see an actual product shot to be enticed to purchase. Now there are two ways that you can go about doing this. You can either purchase a copy of every book that you create and take an actual photo of it, but that would get expensive. Or you can just use a book cover mock-up template, which is much quicker and will save you a ton of money. Now there are a few pay sites out there that will allow you to create book mock-ups for your product shots. But because I promised you ways of promoting your low content books for free, I'm just going to stick to the free sites. 
The free site that I like to use the most is called Cover Vault. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Now there's not a huge selection of templates to choose from here, but that being said, they're free so you can't complain. If you look in the left hand column, you can see that they do have the majority of the trim sizes that low content books tend to come in. That being 5x8, 6x9, and 8.5x11. And not every template comes in both paperback and hardcover. If you want more variety, then you're going to have to subscribe to a pay site. But the few free templates that they do have are pretty good. This one here is one of the templates that I like to use. What I do to get around the limited number of templates available is I actually create a cover for my book in two trim sizes. The first is the actual trim size that I'll be uploading to KDP, and the second is a 5.5 by 8.5 mock-up size. Most people wouldn't be able to tell or distinguish between a 5.5 by 8.5 inch book and a 6 by 9 inch book just by looking at it. As long as your cover image fits nicely on the mock-up, that's really what matters. So all you have to do is click on the read and download button and then you'll be taken to the download page. And if you look at the bottom of this post, you can see in italics that it says that these mockups are free to use for both personal and commercial use. Now if you want more options in pretty much all book sizes, you can always click on the big collection link right here, which will take you over to the entire collection, which is available for a couple of hundred dollars, but that's entirely up to you. To download this free template, all you have to do is click on the download Photoshop PDS link. Then just save the zip file out to your download folder on your computer. Okay, so this is what the template looks like when you open it up in Photoshop. Once you open up this template, the first thing that I would do to save yourself some time down the road is resize this canvas. You're going to want your social media post to be a perfect square. So just go up to image in the top menu and then from the drop down choose canvas size. In the pop-up menu, I'm just going to change the units to pixels and then I'm going to reduce the width of the canvas to the same dimension as the height and then click OK. This will give me a perfect square mock-up. This is also where you want to add in your custom URL. Remember, most people are going to see your post in their newsfeed, not on your homepage, so they're not going to see your website link or your banner, especially on Instagram. In fact, most people don't even read the description of the image. They just take one look at it, decide whether or not they want to like it or not, and then move on. By placing your own custom URL, like nickysnotebooks.com on your image, you're telling people two things. First, that this product is for sale. And second, that this isn't the only product that you have available to purchase. So if this cover design just slightly piques their interest, knowing that there are more products to look at may be enough to get them to visit your online store, which is your author page on Amazon. Okay, so these templates are really simple to use. And as you can see, in the layers menu, you have a group for the front book and the back book. Inside of each of these groups, you have the exact same six layers. For the front book group, you have the corner highlight, the book edge highlight, the front cover image, the shadow on the book's spine, the actual book itself, and the cast shadow. And if you find that any of these effects are either too dark or too light, you can always adjust them by selecting the layer and lowering the opacity right up here. And the same thing goes for the highlights as well. And if you look at the back book group, it's all the same layers, just with fewer highlights and more shadows. And the last adjustable layer is the studio backdrop. By default, it's set to off-white, but if you want to change it to something darker or a particular color, you can always double click on it and then inside the layer style menu, just add a color overlay. This comes in handy when you want your post backdrop to match the color palette of your store header and avatar. Now to change out the images is really simple. All you have to do is find the layer with the cover image on it and then double click on the little image icon. The cover image will open up in a new window. Now just open up your book cover image and then select it all and copy it. Then go back to the layer cover image and edit and paste. Now all you have to do is hit Ctrl T to resize it and then position it so that it lines up properly. Once you've lined it up, just go up to File in the top menu and hit Save. Now if I go back to my mock-up, the new image will automatically have replaced the old one. 
Now just do this exact same thing for the back of the book. Once you've done that, export this image out as either a JPEG or a PNG, and then name it whatever this book cover is. And then once you've done that, save this PDS file out as your working book cover template. So whenever you need to mock up a new book, just open this template, swap out the front and back cover images, and then export the image as a new post. It's that simple. And if you want to stylize this template even more by putting some additional text and graphics on it, go nuts. It's entirely up to you. Okay, on to tip number eight. This next tip is something you don't necessarily have to do, but it's just an additional way to drive traffic to your social media accounts and your Amazon store. Instead of just posting product shots, try posting something like inspirational quotes after every five or six product posts. Quotes and memes tend to get a lot of activity and traffic, so throwing one up every now and then can be an easy way of driving additional traffic to your online store. All you have to do is create a canvas in Photoshop that's about a thousand by a thousand pixels. Then just download a royalty-free image off of either Pexels or FreeImages.com, bring it into Photoshop and paste it on top of your square canvas. Then find a quote that you like on Google and type it out on top of the image. And be sure to put your store URL at the bottom of the image. If you want to stylize the image a little bit more by adding in a border, you can always do that. And then export the image out as a JPEG and save the PSD file as your quote template. Then all you have to do to create your next quote is find another image and another quote. Using your store URL at the bottom of your post is pretty much free advertising for you. Just make sure that you're using a bunch of quote related hashtags when you post your quotes. Hashtags like hashtag motivational quotes or hashtag quote of the day or hashtag inspirational quotes or so on. You get the point. You'd be surprised by how much additional traffic just posting a quote every now and then can bring to your social media page. So give it a try. On to tip number nine. When it comes to posting your books on the different social media platforms, theme hashtags are going to be extremely important. And this goes for all social media platforms. Now, obviously, you're going to want to include hashtags that pertain to what your product is. So if it's a notebook, then you're going to want to include hashtags like notebook, uh, journal, blank journal, line journal, etc. But those aren't the most important hashtags. The most important tags are going to be the themed hashtags. And the reason this is, is because most people don't log on to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even Pinterest looking for line notebooks or journals. If someone is looking for that type of a product, they're just going to go right to the source, Amazon. So the odds that someone will go on to any of the uh, aforementioned social media sites and search for a line notebook is pretty slim. So those product hashtags won't really carry a lot of weight. It'll be by using themed hashtags that your products will get discovered by potential customers. Using this children's dog themed notebook as an example, I'll get far more mileage out of using hashtags that include the theme words like dogs, animals, Pets, cartoons, illustration, animation, drawings, kids, cute, funny, and so on. It's far more likely that someone will log on to Instagram and search for the hashtag dogs rather than the hashtag line notebooks. And if that person is using the hashtag dogs, then it's pretty good odds that they're probably a dog lover. So there's a chance that they'd be interested in purchasing a line notebook with dogs on the cover. The odds that someone is going to be searching a social media website looking for your exact product is highly unlikely. So you're not looking for motivated buyers, you're looking for impulse buyers. People who were searching for something entirely different, but after seeing your product, have to have it. Now your low content book may be something like a word search puzzle book. So yes, you are going to want to use words like puzzle and activity books in your hashtags. But whatever the theme of your word search book is, like let's say it's a Christmas word search book then you're going to want to use words in your hashtags that pertain to Christmas, like Christmas trees, Christmas decorations, Christmas gifts. Anything that deals with the theme of Christmas could deliver you an impulse buyer. So when posting on social media, just remember that about 80% of the hashtags you use should include words that pertain to the theme of your book. Okay, let's move on to our final tip. So the final tip is less of an external promotional tip and more of a way to get more mileage out of your Amazon book listing. 
If you've ever gone through the process of uploading a book to the Amazon marketplace using KDP, then you're well aware of the fact that KDP asks you to choose two categories to list your book in on Amazon and that they only allow you to pick two. What you may not know is that after your book has been published, you can actually request to have your book listed into eight additional categories on Amazon. And in just a minute, I'm going to walk you through the process of doing that. But before I do that, I'm going to show you how to find categories that will broaden your advertising reach on Amazon and show you how to properly write those categories out so that KDP will accept them. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is head over to the Amazon website and make sure that you're in the books department. You can do that just by clicking on this little gray department button and choosing books from the drop down menu and then just hit the search icon. Now that you're in the books department, scroll down until you get to the department section in the left hand menu. As you can see, the word books is in bold. This lets you know that you're in the book department. Everything listed below the word books is a subcategory of this department. Now if I was to click on the words arts and photography, a new subcategory would open up and I would be taken to another page. And if you look under the departments tab in the left hand menu, you can now see that the word books has an arrow in front of it and that the words arts and photography are now in bold. This is basically letting you know that you are in the arts and photography category of the books department. If I was to click on architecture, I would be taken to a new page. Now I'm in the architecture subcategory of the arts and photography category of the books department. And if I was to click on buildings, I would be taken to yet another page once again. And I could keep doing this until I reach the final subcategory of all these categories. So as you can see, the word residential is now in bold. This means that this is the final subcategory available to list your books in. See what you're basically doing here is niching down to a smaller group of books that are in a more specific category. So why would you want to do this? Well because the deeper you go into a niche category, the less competition you have. There are far more books in the arts and photography category than there are in the residential subcategory. And the fewer books there are, the better your chances are of getting your book noticed. Now when it comes time to ask KDP to add your book to a specific category, it's extremely important that you get the hierarchy correct. So for this example, I would write this as books slash arts and photography slash architecture slash buildings slash residential. And this is exactly how you would have to type it out when you make the request to KDP. So when you want to add your book to eight more categories, all you have to do is log into KDP and then scroll down to the bottom of the left hand menu and click on the contact us button. Now in the left hand menu, choose Amazon store and product detail page and then choose update Amazon categories. Now I strongly suggest that you only do this for one book at a time. There's some important information that you have to make sure is in here. First, include your book's ASIN number. You can find this on your bookshelf under the price of your book. Next, they want to know which marketplace you want to add your book to. So if it's the Amazon US marketplace, you would put .com. If it was Canada, you would put in .ca and so on. After that, they want to know what format your book is. Paperback, hardcover, Kindle. And finally, they want to know which categories you want your book added to. Here you can list up to eight. Just make sure that the hierarchy is written out properly and that each category is on a separate line. Now I personally like to start out my email with something like please enter the following ASIN to each of these categories in the US marketplace and then I finish off my letter with thank you. Never hurts to be nice. Once you have all the information listed, just hit the send message button and you're done. Now when you're first publishing your book, you're asked to choose two categories. It's a good idea for your selection to be a literal definition of what your book actually is. In other words, if your book is a line journal, then you should be listing it in a category that pertains to line journals or notebooks or writing paper or something like that. But when it comes time to adding your book to these eight additional categories, you now want to start thinking about your book's theme as opposed to its function. So if I was looking for additional categories for this children's line notebook, which is by the way a book that I created in my video on how to make a thousand dollars a month passive income using BookBolt. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to it at the end of this one. So if I was looking for a category for this book, instead of looking for a notebook or a journal category, I'm going to try to find a category that's fitting to the theme of the book. So I would say that a cartoon dog is probably more appealing to a younger person, so I'm going to choose teen and young adult. Next, it has artwork on the cover, so I'm going to choose art, music, and photography. Out of these subcategories, again, I'll choose art. 
And then finally, it's a cartoon dog. I'll pick the cartoon category. Now, if you look through these listings, most of these books will be instructional books on how to draw cartoons. And the majority of the people coming to this category will be looking for just that. But those people may also be in need of a line notebook. And we already know that these customers are interested in cartoons. So there's a pretty good chance that if they were to buy a notebook, they'd probably want one with cartoons on it. So this cartoon notebook sort of serves as an upsell for all of these other instructional books. It's like when you're cashing out at the grocery store and the checkout counter is surrounded by low priced items like gum, chips, and magazines. The store puts those there hoping that you buy one of them on impulse. For me, it's the Archie's Digest. I'm a huge cartoon and comic fan. And even though I went into the grocery store to pick up my almond milk, my oatmeal, and my frozen fruit, as soon as I see that tiny little Archie comic book, I gotta have it. They get me every time. And that's exactly what you wanna do here. So this category would be the perfect place to list this cartoon themed notebook in. And it's not just cartooning. There are a lot of categories that this notebook would fit into. I could choose children's books, comics and graphic novels, or humor and entertainment. Inside of this category, I could pick humor because it's a dog and it's pretty funny looking and then choose cats, dogs, and animals. And that's all there is to it. Just make sure that when you're writing the categories out for KDP, that you include the entire hierarchy, starting from the books department all the way down. If you skip a subcategory, KDP will reject it. If you add your low content books to eight additional theme categories, it'll go a long way to ensuring that you get at least one impulse sale per month on each one of your books. Give it a try. Well, there you have it. 10 tips to help you start and promote your low content book business for practically no money. Just keep in mind that everything you do to get your books in front of more people is going to increase your odds of creating a substantial passive income for yourself. And I know that some of these tips may seem like a lot of work just to make an extra sale or two every month. But what you got to remember is that an extra sale or two on 500 low content books could work out to an extra thousand dollars or more in your bank account every month. As always, if you like this type of content and you want to see me create more of it, then be sure to give this video a thumbs up and let me know that you like it. Now, if this is your first time on my channel and you're not entirely sure what low content books are, then check out my video on how to make a thousand dollars a month selling low content books using BookBolt. Or watch my video on how to create low content books to sell on Amazon. You can find a link to both of those videos right here. Until next time, take care.